oh shit, Cora's back, but the spirits is attacking, and they don't have any Ghostbusters. So we just got to dep depend on the Avatar, man. This time we got two episodes, man. And to be honest, in terms of the first one, I'd like the first one better, the first intro. But this one seems good, but it seemed like they covered everything somehow. It seemed like this um, season, all we're going to get is them running around opening portals and stuff like that. But we start off with Bolin. He's still doing the fire fairy thing, which is played out, I guess, to Mako and um, um, Korra and Asami. But Asami wasn't in it. My bad. Anyway, he got his ass whooped, got his ass handed to him. And then um, we get Mako, right? We find out that Mako's 5-0 now. And he's running around doing his little policeman thing and trying to save people. And then we also cut back to Asami. We find out that she's trying to bring the company back. And she's trying to meet up with these different dudes, do this, well, this guy to try to do some deals so that she get the um, Sato Corpse back online because they're losing money out their ass. They're going broke faster than MC, MC Hammer, right? And she's trying to get that shit back in, in order. And she's using, she's actually getting Bolin to help her. And uh, she doesn't think Bolin going to help. So she just tells him to be quiet while she go ahead and do her thing. We cut back to Cora. It seems like she's doing the same shit from the first ep in, uh, the first season. She's playing around with the kids, using the Avatar, Avatar State, willy-nilly, going into that shit, you know, just to play with it. Tenzin's like, come on, man, let's, we got to get this shit under control. We got to we gotta focus on our airbending. Boomy's there, right? <laughs> and the funny thing about this, in this ep in these two episodes, Tenzin is, to, I think he's the youngest one. They really show it. Like, usually he's the most mature, serious one. And he still is. But when you see him around his brother and sister, he's like the little kid still again. Boomy's fucking with him. The sister's fucking with him. Boomy's laughing in his face, knowing he's mocking him. It, it, it was funny. I loved Boomy and uh, Tenzin's interaction in this one. You know, so that was good. And then Asami and Bolin, they go to see this weird guy who she's trying to do these deals with. She's trying to keep him on the low, keep uh, tell uh, Bolin to keep shit, you know, on the DL. And he sits there and goes crazy, you know, does what he does. But it turns out the guy they're doing the deals with is actually just like Bolin. You understand? So it actually played down in their favor. And they wind up getting a deal. And now it seems like Asami's going to make a comeback. That was a little bit generic, but it was cool. Um, The thing about them doing that, the guy was just too animated. We already got Bolin. Bolin's an animated enough. I think he's just good enough. Uh, what you call him? This new guy. He took. I think he took it a little bit too far. But we still gotta see next episodes and see what happens with that. They might not even show much, too much more of him anyway, because all he's there for is to get Asami back and you know, in that money, get her rolling in the dough. She's trying to get that YouTube money like uh, Epic Meal Time. So that you know, so even though that was overdone, it's probably they're probably not gonna do it anymore anyway. So anyway, Cora and the gang. They go down to the water tribe, back to, you know, Cora's hometown, and they meet up with the uncle, and they find out, you know, the uncle's the leader of the, um, what's, is it, is it the northern water tribe, or the southern water, the northern water tribe, and, um, some reason, he's wearing purple, I guess that's because he's the leader or whatever, I think he's some kind of, uh, uh, is he the king or some general or some shit, maybe that's the, the color they take. Anyway, she finds out he's the uncle, whatever, and they go back and forth with the uh, brother and the uncle. They got some tension going with them. Now, the thing about this is, Cora is still in that rebellious phase. I don't know if I can get with that. That shit is for the birds. She did that last time, you know, and it seemed like, like, I don't know if the writers think, okay, well, as long as we get somebody to tell a lie to her or to deceive her, she's going to automatically rebel against them. She's al she already rebelling against Tenzin, even though Tenzin did the most for her out of most people in her life. She's going to rebel against him and different people just because, oh, I found out you kept a secret from me at one point in time. Oh, you're not my father anymore because I found out you ain't tell me everything. So that's the type of shit that's getting on my nerves. I don't really get that. 
Just be, if I found out my dad kept a secret from me, unless it was like real huge, I still, even if it was huge, I wouldn't turn on him. I'd just be like, yo, dad, what's up? Why you? You know what I'm saying? That's what I would have did. So that core thing was kind of annoying. But anyway, a spirit attacks, right? And it takes it to uh, Cora out the blue. We find out that spirit's been attacking, you know, boats and stuff like that in the water or whatever. And t what you call him? The uncle comes out and it looks like he's energy bending. And he takes the spirit out. Everybody else is trying. They couldn't do, damn, do a damn thing but this, this is against the spirit. Um, what you call him, uh, Cora, I think she went Avatar State, still couldn't get it, but she was able to only fight it in Avatar State. So that's what made her, now and that's, that's a, a logical reason why she said, you, she should have said, you know what, Tenzin, I'm good enough at airbending, I need to learn, you know, uh, energy bending. I think that's what it was, energy bending, looks like it. I think she should, that, that was a logical enough reason for her to say that instead of turning on Tenzin. She didn't have to turn, she turned on her own pops. But, you know, just just being able to say, yo, I got to learn energy bending. I know I might not be a master at air bending, but I don't know energy bending at all. I got to get that. So that would have made sense if they would have did it like that. So anyway, Cora, she heads to the dirty south in the, uh, the Southern Water Tribe with, you know, her uncle. And he's trying to tell her how to, you know, handle these spirits. And it's a portal down there. It's an imbalance in the world. There's portals. Turns out there's portals around the world where the spirits aren't being able to go in and out of the, the spirit world. I guess it's like a cycle they have to go through. And if they don't go through that cycle, they can become bad spirits. Supposedly, there's no such thing as bad spirits. They just become unclean or something. I don't know. They get imbalanced. And they, they you know, start doing shit, start wreaking havoc and whatever. So... They got to take care of that. Turns out Hard Rock, or, or what's, it, what's the name, Cora's dad, Hard Rock, I think his name Hard Rock or something, something Rock, he was banished from the water, from the Northern Water Tribe, right? Now that part was crazy. Turns out he was a general, right? And they got into this discrepancy, like there was a war going on, and they had to push the people out of the um, the Water Tribe, the, whatever that city they're in. And they pushed them out. And instead of leaving them alone or just letting them go, whatever, Hard Rock says, no, nah, fuck that. We taking it to these motherfuckers, right? Chases them down. They run into, like, sacred ground. You, you, you shouldn't do a damn thing on this ground. And they thought that, that Hard Rock wouldn't come after that, after them in that, that sacred ground. He said, fuck that. He said, we go hard, my dude, right? And him and his boys flooded the damn sake, that, that forest, man. That part was one of the funniest parts in here. Like they said, we don't give a fuck and flooded the whole place. And it turned into a block of ice. When they left, it was just like a, a, a little pond. It was a beautiful forest and it turned into a pond. That was crazy. He said, we don't give a damn. Anyway, after that, the spirits started acting crazy. They unleashed on the people. People aren't taking care of this The um the planet, right? And keeping the balance between the, the, the spirit world and everything else. This reminds me of like Captain Planet. Instead of recycling though and, and pollution, they're dealing with, you know, spirit worlds and shit like that and being spiritual and everything like that. Anyway, Tenzin shows us the Avatar room and everything else like that. That kind of thing was interesting. I want to see more about that kind of stuff. It's a lot of damn um, avatars, whatever. Anyway, the, after that, while they're in the southern uh, uh, part of the uh, world trying to, while they're in the southern part of the world trying to get their thing together, they get ambushed by some uh, spirits. They try their best to fight it off. Unk comes back to the rescue. Energy bends. They're safe. They had to make it back to the um, this, this the portal. Cora gets to the portal. He tells her, "Go ahead, do your thing." And she's like, "Damn." I feel free. He lets me do me. That's what she basically what she said. And she goes in there do her thing. She gets fucked up by these fucked up by these uh, spirits. But she goes into the Avatar state. Now she uh she's able to open this portal in the Avatar state, but they never explained how she was able to do it. And it seemed like kind of generic because she just was able to do it because she was in the Avatar state. I ain't see an energy bend. I ain't see her talk to the old Avatars and figure whatever it out. She just went to the Avatar state and she was able to do it. So that kind of stuff got to me. I didn't really like that. 
after that, we got to the thing with the first avatar. Um, what she call him? Uh, Tenzin's daughter walks in and sees, like, she's looking at all the avatar statues. And she sees this one real old, old one. Looks like it's made out of wood. And it looks like the guy is doing the same thing the uncle is doing. I can't remember his name. Magla, some weird name that I can barely pronounce. That I got to take time out of my day to really learn how to pronounce. She sees it and it looks like he's energy bending. Now, he's the first avatar. That was the most interesting thing about this episode. And they, even though uh, Cora, she solved that one problem and that one thing, but when her uncle, at the end, her uncle said, we got to put in a lot more work. Because there's a lot of other things they got to do, and there's a lot of other portals I think they got to uh, open up or close or whatever. But anyway, um, I think the most important thing was the Avatar. We, get, we got to see the first Avatar, but... I hate it that they showed him in the intro. I think they should have just left that alone and just showed us in the episode that statue so we can, you know, that is spoil. It's like they spoiled us. Damn, it was a spoiler, basically. Spoiler alert. Why didn't they do that? You know, why did they do that? They showed us that. I think they shouldn't have showed us that. But the interesting thing is we're going to find out how the avatars got started. Another interesting thing is how does this energy bending works and the spirit world that's what i want to learn about and i think that those are going to be the three things that's going to keep me interested in this new series you know so but mo the most important i mean the most interesting thing to me was the first avatar i want to find out how it happened and if they kill like remember in the uh first avatar they killed almost everybody that was an airbender right now they will if they would have succeeded in killing everybody that was an airbender with what happened to the Avatar. But remember, there was a first Avatar. So could it be another Avatar created? That's some questions I want to figure out. Go ahead and leave me in the comments section. Let me know what you think about this. Whether you think they could, you know, there could be another Avatar. And tell me more about this uh, energy bending. If you like the video, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe. Anime and manga means more. Ghostbusters need to come and help her ass now.